Hello, everybody. Hi. Welcome back to the Classic of Tea, Episode 6, Sunday Tea Book. Episode who knows what. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. 50, 60? Yeah, who knows? Who's counting? If you're counting, let us know what episode that you believe this is. Or if you've actually counted, even let us know. Holy cow, we are looking forward to an action-packed uh, day today. We've got it all, like usual. We've got mm -hmm. tea trivia time coming up. We've got a fantastic tea ready to brew. We want to know what you are brewing. Yep. And if you're on Instagram, I got to tell Instagram. Oh, you got to okay. get over to YouTube for a whole bunch <laughs> of reasons. Not just tea trivia time. But you missed the whole pre-roll where I finish off with a cute little song. I, I, sing, I do these ridiculous... I'm super proud of that song. That's why I insist that he has to And I'm super song. embarrassed by it. So I do these goofy things in front of the camera when we're shooting videos to just kind of loosen up and get ready. And they often get used as, as like a little intro or an outtake or something. And it's, it's terribly embarrassing. So if you want to uh, participate in my embarrassment, you got to get onto the YouTube side because it's just a much better experience. That's where tea trivia happens. Let so, us know what you're brewing. Today we're brewing a 2000 A Shampoir. Uh, it's pretty excited. When did we last have that? A while ago. I was going to say, when I was, when I was working on the, the pre-roll and thinking about this tea, I was like, I might take careful notes and update the website. Mm. It's been a while. You know, it's a 2008. We don't pull this out every morning for mm -hmm. breakfast. You know what I'm saying? Super excited about this tea. Let's see how it's... You uh, yeah, give Instagram a little peek. There's the right. chunk that we're going to brew. We're going to get a close-up oh, look at that good. on YouTube too. So again, right. Instagram, you got to dive over to YouTube ASAP. Um, yeah, so let me tell you a little bit about what is Sunday Tea Book and what we're doing here. So Sunday Tea Book is where Jen and I take a book, a paper, or an article that is uh, jam-packed full of great information about Chinese tea and its culture but it's not available in English, or if it is available in English, maybe it's a little bit of a, of a dubious translation. So we go over it, we clarify, we translate it live right here with you and share that whole process with you. So you might think to yourself, well, geez, why would you translate live? Why wouldn't you just publish a blog post with the finished transcript? And that's a really good question. But as we've been doing this Sunday Tea Book over the months, and I think I can even say years now, mm -hmm. um, and what inspired Sunday Tea Book in the first place was in working with Jen, just asking these questions and going over this stuff together is so enriching and so enlightening about a whole bunch of other aspects of Chinese tea that we thought, and you guys even suggested, why don't you do that live? It might be even more fun. And you were right, because it is. It's a blast. <laughs> so that is why we do the translation here. That is what Sunday Tea Book is. And, uh, and we always warm up with a little trivia, which is just a lighthearted, quirky, fun way to get rolling and check on some of the information we're doing and just for us to share information with you in a, in a fun way. So Instagram, you've got to go over to YouTube to check out tea. <laughs> That's how you got to interrupt it. To check out tea trivia time. And uh, yeah, if you are on Instagram, just before you leave, give us a like or a thumbs up or a wave, a, a wave or an up arrow, whatever the heck you guys do on Instagram. I'm really, it's not my domain. She's the Instagram boss. Uh, YouTube people, if you feel like this is already awesome, just the intro, go ahead and hit the thumb up. You can wait till later if you want to. See For the speed this... of talking, I think he deserves yeah, it. Yeah, if you want to see if it's worth it. <laughs> but if you really want to support us, you can always go to our webpage and uh, pick up some tea. Uh, I actually generated, uh, I've got a great new product there, which is the bundle of teas coming up that go with Sunday Tea Book. So with one click, you can add that to your cart. You will save 25% uh, on the net price of all the teas. You can go ahead and check my math. Um, but uh, it's a great deal. So there is a Sunday Tea Book sip along pack or just grab whatever you like. Okay. I don't think he want to miss it. That's why I kind of insist on no, no, I agree. I agree. <laughs> interrupting. And I was going to say, I, don't, I always start super excited, but I really predict for this episode, I'm going to mellow right out as soon as I have the first sip. You watch. It's really uh, something. <laughs> what is that? That woody... Little, like a little bit of hint of... Um, I don't know if people don't know Chinese pharmacy, but there's a little Chinese pharmacy element and herbal. it's pleasant. It's really herbal that and herbal pleasant. That herbal flavor that uh, you would expect from age to poor. Yes. So we're getting some waves on the uh, YouTube side. Hello, Hello on the YouTube Lucas side. And uh, Gigi, I don't know how to pronounce the next. Oh, uh, 
Guinette. I don't want to. Guinette. I don't want to butcher your name. Sorry. Gigi Guinette. But, hello. I think. Welcome. I think it's Gigi Guinette. Let me know if right. I nailed that or if I was a little off. Um, I think I'm going to say goodbye to Instagram. Okay. Get over to YouTube, Instagram, if you want to check out Tea Trivia Time and hear more about the classic of tea. We're going to talk about what we're doing today there. So head on over. Yeah. So classic of tea, 1,200 years ago, is an ancient text. Uh, sometimes you might wonder why are we reading this and. Uh, I'm trying to the one of the thing I'm trying to do here on Sunday Tea Book is while well, we translate and explain what Lu Yu has been written on his text, I try to uh, uh, integrate some of what's happening right now and uh, some useful information for tea lovers nowadays, so that we can not only see the beginning of tea tasting of tea appraisal, but also uh, learn something useful for our. Uh, daily tea life yeah and uh the translation is okay the translation is two layer first is from ancient chinese text to modern chinese text mm. which uh, i'm using the book the classic of tea narratives and uh, narrative and the commentary mm. by mr wu jianong the founding father of uh, China's modern tea industry yeah. and a very well studied and very well uh, written book and from the English uh, from the Chinese modern Chinese to uh, English we do the translation none of us are pro so what I'm trying to do is I, I mean none of us are pro interpreters and translators right. so for sure the text you see will be really bad and I also try to, because there are many versions of English translation out there, uh, the slight difference what I did is I try not to throw in explanations that were not in the original text mm. to make that co uh, cohesive and understandable. So that part we put here in yes. Sunday Tea Book, I do the explain. What you will see on our website will be a little bit awkward and as if they're a part, a sentence, a sentence, a sentence. That's how it uh, That's originally how it appeared, was. Right. So uh, it's awkward, but just want to kind of explain. Yeah. So if you want, the link is down below to the translation for chapter three and the other chapters. But chapter three is today, so you could follow along with that as original as possible text, uh, of course, uh, and uh, the video, this video and the video from last week are also there uh, or will be there. So you can check out, you can get the context and all the other stuff around it from that video. So it's like the whole package right there on one lovely little web page. Mm -hmm. Link down below. Yeah, be sure to check it out. And that's a French name. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I learning was... uh, French on Duolingo. Duolingo? Duolingo. Lingo, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, oh, I should be able to try to pronounce it. But as he said, he gave us a free okay. pass on the name because even French Thank people, <laughs> they, they screw it up. So we will, we will definitely take that free pass. Mm. Yeah, so also in links down below, which are handy, you don't need to jump away and watch them now, but there's some good warm-up videos to the Classic of Tea, again, because it's a 1,200-year-old uh, tome of knowledge. We did a video on Lu Yu, uh, and we also did a video on the Tang Dynasty, kind of to help you get into the right mindset to understand where Lu Yu is coming from and what, what the era of the Tang Dynasty was about when this uh, was written. There's also a great video by Jen down there about the Chinese language and little, uh, little traps and uh, pitfalls that we, we have experienced mm. that relate to tea and the tea world uh, and beyond. Link also down there. So yeah, I knew this would mellow me out. <laughs> it didn't did work for me. <laughs> mm. How would you describe that? Okay, let's work on this. It has very gentle of a shen fuar bite. That's mm -hmm. for me. It's already not a bite. It's more of that. For rainforest wildness that yes. I like, I don't call it a bite. I don't feel it's unpleasant. Mm -hmm. It's not overly mellow, so I like the profile combination, yeah. and it's a sweet. It has a. I like your jungle metaphor. It has mm -hmm. that sort of jungle, uh, jungly flavor. Um, 
I wasn't going to call it bite, and I didn't want to call it smoky. Mm. For me, mm. I was coming at it from a smoky angle because I read the old tasting notes, and uh, but it's not quite smoky either. But it has Clean that mouth uh, feel. Uh, cigarish, really, mm. like one percent of the cigarish smoke. See, I still would use the smokiness mm. be because it does have yes, that tobacco, it does have it. that kind of a flavor that I found is a really pleasant note. I just love the combination and the sweetness. I thought of that. The taste just like maple sap, fresh maple sap, because we were mm. making the um, maple syrup sap, this year. Okay, not syrup. So not for those syrup. of you, many of you probably never had sap directly mm. from the tree, but the, the sweetness level is. It's apparent yet subtle. Is that one? Mm. You know, it's really obviously sweet, but it's not booming. It's just, it's there mm. and it has that sort of underpinning. So we got to restate, right? Uh, people are wondering. This is a oh. 2008 right. uh, Lao Shu Shempuar available on our website. Links down mm -hmm. below. Mm -hmm. um, and um, as I said in the pre roll, this, I think, one of the cool things, and I don't know if everybody does this or not, but we do. Uh, we break the bing for you into a smaller portion so uh, you can try it. So mm. uh, that's pretty cool. Mm. And just to sip and breathe over it. Mm. Yeah, I had to breathe right. over it. I just it. love that. Mm. Every, every sip I take some moment. I don't take two, three sips at once or yeah. chug, uh, finish the whole cup. And I, I just love, I don't know, if you guys have tried this, to tell us how you would describe this. Mm taste yeah we, it has a i remember this tea and this is the, this is not the last time we tried it but i remember brewing this tea at the toronto tea festival and so many people who were you know maybe they're into tea but a lot of people who weren't into tea were really struck by this tea they really they're like take one sip and they've been sipping mm. you got to put it in context right they've been sipping tea all right. day at every single table and they usually sip and go sip and go sip and go oh thank you you know it's polite it's mm. very cordial sip and go what tea is this? And we tell them, and they're like, "Oh, I'll get it back." And they just yeah, grab it's a it pretty, back. So it I don't know speaks how to it. people, right? It has a <laughs> yeah. really pleasant mouthfeel. You do not have to be a, a tea connoisseur to appreciate the uh, profile of this. It'll just reach out and uh, hug you, you know, right? Kind of like that. <laughs> All right, all right. All right, let's hug with some TTT. Tea, tea, tea. All right, yes, it is. I got to do a bunch oh, of... Because I have a great content. I really think I have a great content today. Um, oh, this is a really exciting episode, so let's move <laughs> well, it along. We'll see if you agree let's with me. Let's move it along. Okay, folks. I'm going to hit that. I'm going to go back here. I got to smooth this out a bit. Here we go, folks. It is... Tea! tea. Trivia! Time! Oh yeah, this is, that's right folks, it is tea trivia time. This is the time when you and I uh, have a little quirky fun. I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. You're going to enter the number of the answer that you think is right and hit enter. The less you enter, the better. So the number only is going to get you the best result. The magical computer will tabulate our results. You will win bragging rights only. We're just having fun here. Take a guess. Uh, it's not, it's not meant to be uh, you know, a big test that you will get into or not get into tea school. All right, here we are. The seven steps of tea making in the classic of tea are, is it steam, crush, press, roast, thread, and seal? Or is it roast, crush, press, steam, thread, and seal? Or is it hui wen, the flower aroma, yu wen, <laughs> the leaf aroma, ya wen, uh, something else that got cut off, or is it first smell, second smell, third smell? I must have forgot <laughs> to update some of my answers somehow. <laughs> so that should help you guys out. So just take a guess. Uh, the seven steps of tea making in the classic of tea. Is it answer one, answer two, answer three, or answer four? All right, the computer is starting to tabulate. So if you haven't answered yet, make sure you get your answer in as soon as possible. So we will capture your, uh, your response. Here they come. A time signature managed to get in under the wire and got the answer right. Way to go, time signature. Uh, you nailed it. It is steam crush, press, roast, thread, and seal. Quite different from the uh, steps that we're used to today. We're going to be diving more into that in this episode. So uh, hold on to your hats. This is, I don't know, I find the processing 
of ancient tea. Uh, I don't know, it's just interesting to see how it was done and how it's transformed. Mm, this is so good. All right. Another one from uh, today's chapter. The eight grades of tea in the classic of tea are, is it one? Yi, er, san, su, wu, liu, qi, and ba. Is it two? There were only six grades of tea in the classic of tea. Mm. Oh, typos, typos. I was obviously rushed. Three. Is it low, medium, low, medium, medium, high, high, super high, <laughs> ultra high, and super ultra top grade? Or is what? it four? Boots, bison's chest, clouds, water, pottery, farmland, bamboo shoot, and lotus leaf. This is a hard one, okay? Now that I see all the answers together, I realize they all seem quite ridiculous. So good luck, folks. Good luck, folks. Lucas, definitely good. I saw that one. Sometimes there's a lag in internet and, yes, uh, the, yes. and the system somehow... Sometimes As I said, speak. guys, it's all you're all winners in my okay. book. So You can uh, keep the point. Yep. Or you keep the, the like, point. You yeah. get two points for not getting one on the screen, all right? All right, last uh, chance for the eight grades and time signature again. Uh, no, sorry, no one got it right with, uh, it's actually boots, bison's chest, clouds, water, pottery, farmland, bamboo oh. shoot, and lotus leaf. So we'll talk about that. A little bit crazy, seems odd, stay tuned. We're going to talk about those uh, <laughs> eight grades of tea, those eight crazy grades. Darn. Good guess. Good Some guess from the answer wasn't... Uh, yeah, it's not recording all of them. It has quite a bit of lag. I'm not yeah. sure what to do about that. Oh, he's on a train. Okay, well, that might explain it. Uh, All right, folks, according to the classic of tea, tea plucking usually occurs during, is it one, May, June, and July in the Western Gregorian calendar? Is it number two, March, April, and May in the Chinese solar lunar calendar? Is it three, it's all done during February in the Chinese solar lunar calendar? Is it four, April, May, and June in the Chinese solar lunar calendar? We did chat about that last week, so this is a little review question for you guys, and kind of mixing up the uh, the Chinese solely lunar calendar and the uh, Western Gregorian. So, what a tea class! Every now and then you gotta check your, your answers yeah. carefully before you submit, but submit as quickly as possible, especially if you're on a train or an airplane or in space. Oh, well, that'd be cool when we have our first participant from space. <laughs> Uh, Gigi has guessed number two, March, April, and May in the Chinese Soli Lunar. Uh, Lucas is also in with a number two. I think that will get captured in time signature. And we have a sweep, folks. They Ooh. all got it right. Way awesome. to go. Yeah. Yeah. You guys nailed that one. Way to go. It is March, April, and May in the Chinese Soli Lunar calendar. I'll have to tame the crowds because we need to move on to our next question eventually. <laughs> all right, I'll get a little refill. And I didn't see if anybody, if you're brewing anything, and if you've got anything in your kettle or in your teapot or in your gaiwan, let us know uh, what it is and how you're enjoying it, what are the flavor notes, and we will move it right along. Which of these metaphors for a tea cake was not used in the classic of tea? Is it one, freshly explored farmland washed by the storm? Is it two, clouds rising from the mountains? Is it three, an elephant's ear after a mud bath? Or is it four, a foreigner's leather boot? Which of these metaphors was not used in the classic of tea? They all sound so insane. Aren't they compelling? I'm telling you, it was challenging to make a metaphor as compelling as Lu Yu. And Gigi says, this is fun, I like you tea nerds. That's good, Gigi, <laughs> we like you too. That's excellent. You are going to be turned, however, to the dark side of tea nerdery. Right. So, brace for impact. <laughs> All right, which of these metaphors was not used, not used in the classic of tea? Here we are. Was it freshly explored farmland? Oh, Whoa. jump in really quick. And the right answer is an elephant's ear mm. after a mud bath. And it looks like Gigi would have had the right answer, but the computer missed it. But we know you got it. Way to Two go. Point. Two Great point. guess. Great guess. Uh, I thought it was cute because elephant is a little bit, you know, I know, romantic and the mud bath is brown like a tea cake. So I really worked hard to make that a tricky one. So good well, job, Gigi, is, and good job, Lucas. Where oh, he no, is, Lucas he doesn't it. have an elephant. That's right. <laughs> you wouldn't be. That's right. I bet you. Did you thought of that? 
Oh, mm -hmm. wow. You're high. All right, folks, probably the most important question of today's tea trivia time. What is next week's sip along tea? Is it one, Wu Yi Tsi Lan? Is it two, Dian Hong Black Tea? Is it three, Bai Yi Tsi Lan? Or is it four, 2008 Lao Shu Shen Puar? And I promise I'll stop using the game show host voice as soon as tea trivia time is over. But until then, you'll have to put up with it. <laughs> All right, next week's sip along tea. Is it Wu Yi Tsi Lan, Dian Hong Black Tea, Bai Yi Tsi Lan, or 2008 Lao Shu Shen Puar? Impressive deception. Yes. So um, somebody has already what? pointed out in the uh, chat uh -huh. when somebody asked us what we're brewing, they said uh -huh. it's in the description. So I can picture them now frantically looking for next week's description to get this one right. <laughs> Lucas comes in with Bayat Silan, one of my favorite teas, by the way. So great, yes. Mm. Time signature right? and Gigi quickly jump on the bandwagon. Lucas says, I hope it's by that Tsilan, and so do I, but unfortunately, oh, you I all got that. it wrong. But you're close. It's Wu Yi Tsilan. Good Ooh. try, though. Good try. Good try. And I agree. It's a very underappreciated tea, especially for how We're talking about Bai Yi Tsilan right now. Okay. Because it's so good. It's just like a croissant in a cup. Wu Yi Tsilan, same cultivar, different process, is a, uh, I almost said dark tea, but what I really mean is a rock tea. All right, folks. Tea trivia time, the computer is adding up all of your correct answers and not adding up the ones that you missed, that it missed, but uh, you're all winners in my book. It looks like everybody got at least two answers, one or two answers recorded, so you yeah. at least had two or three each. Lucas, uh, uh, Gigi had at least two answers not recorded. That's right. Correct. You're all winners in my book. This was super mm -hmm. fun, so uh, let's move along and get into the classic of tea. Cool. Well, look at this, having some cold brew bottle of ginger with orange blossom flower. That sounds yeah, really I delicious. I saw really it. summery. I bet I, it tastes good. Yeah, that does sound really good. Juice right. with orange blossom. Oh mm. boy, I I don't believe I've ever had a scented tea with orange blossom. That's I've got to mm. put. I've got to add that to my list. Yeah. All right. So there you can see. Uh, maybe you can tigers show. of the tea. The tigers of the tea. Yes. Yes. We have integrated that very song into our skipping, skipping routine. routine. <laughs> yes. Give you a little look at the, uh, the magic as it happens. <sighs> can you see? Maybe I should put this here. I don't know. I don't really know what I'm doing, I think. You're doing this great. This camera always gets me crazy. Well, wow, the color looks much darker in the camera than mm. in real life, I think. This might, oh, that's better. That's better. Yeah, that's pretty that's good. That's more of what I would see in real life. It's orange with a little bit of the red tinge, not as deep. Right? Yeah, just slowly coming out. This is a brain exercise. <laughs> it's really tricky, huh? Yeah, yeah. All right, so um, I'm going to do one more PSA. Okay. Uh, just PSA? to remind folks, public service announcement. Okay. Just to remind <laughs> folks about the Discord channel. The link is down below. If you want to join our Discord, you can kind of ask us questions and ask the whole community questions there. And uh, well, we'll be back next week, same time for Sunday Tea Book. The week after will be a week off. So I might do something. I might do something special and fun on the Discord. So you might want to join in on that. I'll say more about it next week. Oh, Gigi is asking, do you call this a gaiwan or a chan? Chang. What's a chan? I don't know. I call this a gaiwan. What is a chang? I don't know. Mm. We don't know what a chang is, but we call it a gaiwan. Yeah. Yeah. A debate. Mm. Mm. Okay. Hopefully we won you the debate <laughs> and didn't lose it for you. Yeah. Um, well, while well, you tell us uh, what chang is, uh, never heard of a chang. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, let us know what it is. I'm curious. Mm. Well, while you answer that, let's dive, continue on uh, chapter three. Chapter three, the name is called tea processing. Tea processing or tea making. But uh, the whole chapter only have one sentence dedicated to tea process. And uh, most of it talk about tea plucking as well as the tea quality. Uh, more like tea appraisal, appraisal right? Tea, tea appraisal. appraisal, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we made a little chart of uh, a flow chart to help you 
understand because uh, understand the uh, the T processing step com uh, considering in chapter two the tools are mentioned and stuff. It basically uh, the key process on the chart are I kind of highlighted with a star like steam is a, uh, me, like a, a important step mm. crushing and uh, do the molding and drying and roasting so I feel like uh, with a chart it's easier for us to learn or remember and kind of visualize it too and yes. give it some kind of an order yes and uh, one interesting thing that uh, not very important, but interesting is in this chapter when Lu Yu says the pressing and the molding uh, step, he used the word pi, which means like a pat kind of thing. Uh, why this is an interesting word? Because in chapter two, we mentioned we know all the tools, we know some measurements and stuff, but exactly how we use it, we are not very sure from his description. Mm -hmm. So in this one, pi is an interesting word because that kind of tell you the strength of a pressing. Okay. It's not like I press everything like a super as, a, as hard as I can or just fill the mold with the leaf and that's the molding or shaping or right. pressing. So it give it a little, it means that there's some pressure but also not overly and right. uh, in the in the future when we talk about Song Dynasty tea, which they also use tea cake, some of the step, they actually press the tea cake extremely hard. So there is a difference, right. even though Tang Dynasty tea, Song Dynasty tea, both are tea cakes, they're not identical. The process are different. Right, right. Those are the little molds, right? Yes, that they those are used. the little molds. So the word P gives us a sense of the uh, the pressure they would exert. They are not mm. going to fill those as full mm. as they can and put six or seven big rocks on it or something yeah. like that. Yeah, and also uh, combined with uh, later on when he talk about uh, tea appraisal, the look of the tea cake, that mm. also tells you they're not pressing the cake as hard as they can because they want the texture. Some of the textures are desired, like the foreigner's boots. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite, uh, my new favorite. Yeah. T grade, and in this case, it was the top T right. grade, leather like a foreigner's boot. Okay, uh, let's have a look. I feel like there are some good. Did I see? Do you call this a guy one? I heard of a Chang. Whoa. Uh -huh. Chang Li seems to have been a character in the. Uh... Same thing. Okay, so the same thing. I call it a guy one too, but a friend saw oh. it named a Chang in the Chinese art of tea. A book by John. Oh, okay. Bit outdated is from Low the film. 80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah it could be the same the thing. Yeah, and would that be a Chinese character? Like uh, the, the pronunciation too, yeah. Yeah. that translated as a charm? I don't know. Huh, cool. Yeah. Never heard of that. Mm -hmm. Probably oh, slightly more know. importantly, it's also a character from the Street Fighter se uh, series, uh, the Street Fighter franchise. <laughs> That's pretty important to note too. Thank you for that time signature. Time signature. I have a question for you. Okay, this is not related to this topic, but this is what I have been always curious, but don't know. How would you explain the difference between accent and dialect in a concise sentence? Ooh. Oh, the, I don't know. Like. I need help. I try to explain to people wow. the difference is really hard and I just and I don't have the proper background and knowledge to really do it right. So need I a little I feel help like from you. I need a pro opinion on that. Right, right. That is a that is a, <laughs> a tough one. Mm. Okay. We well, since we mentioned the um, uh, the foreigners' boots, if you look at the uh, text and the translation we did on the website, you would notice it, it is quite insane. What is a foreigner's booth <laughs> and what is the, the the farmland after the rain and stuff yeah. first of and he and the word right. he used was a uh, newly explored farmland which which i don't know right that's quite interesting yeah. right i took that to mean um you know fresh turned freshly mm -hmm. turned over mm -hmm. soil not like oh we just cleared the forest and found a new section of the world which is now mm -hmm. farmland you know because explored has that yeah Discovery. It's a very specific and detailed uh, metaphor. Mm. Uh, let's just use the foreigners' boots as a little example. 
What is a foreigner's boots? Le- a foreigner's more specific foreigner's leather boots,、mm. right? Yes. First, traditional,、uh, old-time Chinese people like、uh, the China China people,、mm-hmm. we don't wear、uh, animal boots. Right. We are more like a silk, cotton, linen that kind yeah, of yeah, like wrapped shoes. They're more fabric, like wrapped shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff. And so, these, just to be back up a little, these are metaphors for the appearance of the tea cake, right? Yes. So that's what we're kind yes, of looking for. Yes, it's describing the texture、mm. of the tea cake,、mm. and、uh, by foreigner boots means they wear leather boots.、Mm. The Chinese people don't wear leather boots. Those、right. are, and the foreigner, to be specific, at that time is not like an Englishman or Americans.、Right. It's uh, uh, yeah. the Persian at that time,、mm-hmm. or Middle East, where those、mm-hmm. uh, uh, merchants come to town、uh, capitals and do business.、Mm-hmm. So only those people would have that style. First boots is something the West、yep. would have. Second is leather. So that texture. You cannot just say like a shoe texture because for because this book is for Chinese people in Chinese, right?、Mm-hmm. So for Chinese, I would think about a fabric texture,、right. which is not accurate. That's why it has to be very specific of certain things.、Right. But just now we are in today's situation, where we're like, huh?、Right. Why is that? Yeah, and.、Um, I think it doesn't really work personally. I feel like it doesn't. Re- but every、uh, metaphor there was like similar to this scenario. But、uh, doesn't really worth us to deep,、uh, deep dive into what exactly look like because the tea cake is not there anymore. We're not、mm. drinking like that anymore. But、uh, those、uh, metaphors does reflect、uh, something. The overall concept of. You look at a tea. You could get、yeah. some information about its quality, which is still very useful information for、yes. today's tea. Very, yeah. So, I'd like to. And it's kind of even more、mm-hmm. shocking in his case. Like it, it makes a little bit more intuitive sense nowadays. It's loose leaf tea. Of course,、mm. we could probably get some information about the tea by examining the leaf carefully. Right. In his day, it was a cake. It's still applicable. Yeah, for、And、sure. You can still get information about the tea by examining it. Yeah, and all those metaphors basically was telling you、uh, is a, a different aspect to reflect、uh, the the material of the tea, the how hard it is pressed,、mm-hmm. what's the time is time frame it was、uh, processed, and、uh, how much crush it was、uh, done. So、mm-hmm. it's the relationship between the appearance, vis a vis the process and、mm-hmm. some、uh, raw material quality,、mm-hmm. and.、Uh, Is that all for the tea appraisal?、Uh, appraisal in nowadays? No, his、uh, right. pers- his aspects、uh, in today we call that gan kan, means look at the dry leaves, and it's a part of look at dry leaves.、Mm-hmm. Take a break. I need to have some tea. <laughs> It reminds me of、uh, again. This is one of my go-to episodes from China Tea. Our first、uh, season of Sunday Tea Book. There's a great chapter in there. That's a book by Jen, by Jen's mom, Jenny Wu, and she has a great chapter about tea appraisal that really will take your tasting skills to the next level. So dig that up. I think the link's down below. If not, I'll put it after the episode's over.、Um, but she talks about three looks,、yes. right? As the first step of tea appraisal is three looks, three smells, three tastes, three aftertastes. It's a It'll revolutionize your whole ability to appreciate tea, but this、right. is sort of that thing, right?、Got、yeah,、it. and even with the cake. I mean, they have cake. We also have cake today,、mm-hmm. yep. like、uh, puar and stuff.、Mm, like dry look is still a very important part of it,、uh, especially especially when it goes to antique, like aged.、Uh, mm. A、tea cake. If you are、uh, spending like hundreds of thousands of dollars on one cake and stuff, those are very important.、Uh, in our Chinese magazine, I kind of explain how you can、mm. easily identify the、uh, counterfeit by just the naming, because a lot of、uh, teas in the market,、uh, antique tea in Western market, their naming you read that you know is for sure and fake.、Mm-hmm. You don't even have to、uh, care too much about the tea itself. 
Well, <laughs> also like a lot of it, if that doesn't help you sift out a lot of tea, you look at their website, pay, uh, their pictures and stuff. Uh, despite the color and stuff, sometimes you, you look at that cake, you know it's uh, for sure counterfeit because the tea from the 60s, 70s or 80s, they all have their own uh, like a rule of how to make. Mm. Tang Dynasty tea, they're all same inside and out. Similar right. with a lot of cake like a current times mm. cake. Uh, but older teas, a lot of times, most of most all of the times, they have sa mian. We call sa mian, which means the surface and the cake itself are different materials. And uh, I've seen a lot of uh, <laughs> expensive antique teas that are absolutely wrong. Those are because it was the same material through mm. and through. Yes, mm. and all times, which type of cake use what grade of? There's tons of. Uh, Rules. Details, it's a very right. detailed and it's a very structured because it was right, a, right. Uh, state made. But I will put the link to yeah. Chia Ren down below because anyway, that is a that great That was article. a little bit off the topic, yeah, but just to topic, say it's also uh, an interesting thing. For yeah, me. yeah. And there's some good simple tips like that in that article. So I'll put it down below because it could be useful to people. Mm. Anyway, well, nowadays when we look at the tea, and uh, look at the dry leaf, a lot of things we can see, like uh, the leaf itself is that uh, even, even, like are they uniformed? Uh, it, does it, okay, tea itself has to be according to its type. You cannot use Longjing standard for Bi Luo Chun, right? Even though they're both green tea. But in general, as one type of tea, you can see if it's uniformed mm -hmm. and how tightly is it pressed, is it tight or, uh, uh, you know, rather loose or the tenderness of the leaf. There's a lot of information you could get from just a look at the dry leaf itself. Mm -hmm. And for tea lovers, even though like, you know, we're not buying, we probably already bought the tea, right? That dry look also help you uh, brew, decide mm -hmm. how are you going to brew it? How right. much tea are you going to put? What's the temperature? How long are we going to put it there? Right. For example, if it's super tightly packed, right, you're going to give it a little yeah. longer on the first infusion to start to loosen up and, and infuse. Mm -hmm. Same with the tea cake. Like uh, if you look at tea cakes, uh, if you, because Lu Yu also in his text, he point out uh, that if the leaves are curled up and stuff, it's not as good. Same mm -hmm. with us. If you see a tea cake that is curled, it usually means that the drying process is not even. It's a simple, but also very technical things. And you can easily pick out of the quality of the uh, tea cake. And um, one thing that uh, Louis said still applies to today is at the end, he summarized that to evaluate the tea, you cannot just pick out one element. You have to mm overall evaluate the tea of its pro and con and why that caused it and that's a solid tip. solid tip mm. for even today because we cannot just say this tea is a uh, banjang is good that tea is from wuyi that's good mm. or oh this is mint tea and green tea that's good mm -hmm. the, it's, there are a lot of uh, factors to place in yeah yeah when we taste tea, I know you always ask me, you know, what do you, what do you notice is good? What do you notice is bad? Mm. Why? Right. What do you think? Why do you think that's good? Why do you think that's bad? I get the, I get some pretty, pretty fun quizzes. <laughs> A little bit hard, but those are mm. ways to uh, think, especially for us to understand every sip we're tasting. What is in mm. this? What are we tasting? So, you know, and you would, uh, have times that uh, some tea doesn't look as good. It doesn't necessarily simply say that's a bad tea because mm. in tea evaluation, the taste mm. itself is the fundamental, mm. but you have to consider the look of it. Right. Um, one interesting thing I wanted to add is we talk about tea tasting. Most of the time we talk about me, you, people taste tea, mm -hmm. but uh, tea tasting, the whole tea analyzing is actually 
um, a modern science too. Mm-hmm. It's happening in labs too for half century, I would say. Mm-hmm. Uh, people have been exploring how to make all the sensory uh, factors into numbers and how can right. we put that right. in. So um, many years ago, there have been ones testing the tenderness of the leaf, uh, the, the concentration of the liquor, and uh, the use the light to analyze the liquor colors. Because, mm. you know, on everybody's website is red, copper. Those are my copper definition might not be right. your copper yeah. definition. And even right? the picture might be a little bit color off. Exactly. Right. Computer, the, the monitor, everything would affect mm-hmm. it. So there are a lot of trying in the labs to make that very uh, universal. And also, for example, when we talk about uh, tea content, we talk about thea, like uh, oh, caffeine for sure. Theobromine. Theobromine. Um, thea. L-theanine. Um, a bunch yeah. of those wacky chemicals that make tea so amazing. Like, mm. uh, and all of those all contributed to the taste of the tea. Amino acids, yeah. Amino acids, exactly. So there are testing done on teas that are, say, help rating the tea, roughly. Mm. The ultimate mm. uh, work is still done by human because the tea the, is so complex. The, uh, mm. um, the chemical compounds in it is so complex. They are still exploring as in testing level, uh, much progressing well. But a lot of things we still cannot uh, correlate with a specific or the combination of mm-hmm. compounds. Like what Chinese like to say, chun, what make the tea r- rich and clean. Mm. Rich and clean and thick, like that kind of tasty nose. Yeah. What exactly contribute and stuff are not fully clear, but a lot of uh, uh, taste uh, and uh, uh, compound relationship has been figured out. And uh, nowadays, sometimes you uh, start a new tea farm, especially more professional level, not saying, mm. not like a farmer start a farm. It's a really run a tea farm in a... Uh, in a real business sense, business right? Sense, the, uh, the goal right? is to, maybe the goal is to start a farm, make a great yes, tea and become yes. a top player in a tasting green yes, tea. Yes, and realm. figure out what tea should I really produce? Mm. Besides the people knowing the skills and technologies, it's, uh, it's very common now to send your soil, send your tea mm. plants, and, and of course, the plants that grow in your soil, right? Mm. So the same cultivar grow in my hometown vis-a-vis in Ottawa would be hugely different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we notice that even with veg. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, so they would send the sample to the lab. Lab would look at all the uh, uh, the data and say, hey, for your farm, this tea better don't produce black tea. Green tea is better, or vice versa, right, or right. anything. Wow. So um, that's pretty high tech. Yeah, personally, right. I haven't uh, heard much people talk about that in the West, but it's a pretty uh, a standard and well known process in China when we talk about tea, like. Uh, so just want to add it a bit. Yeah. Wow, that's super interesting. I would love to, uh, maybe on one of our tea trips, it would be so interesting to visit a lab behind the scenes who's yeah. looking into the yeah. soil and the plant. And, oh, fascinating. I'm right? telling you as a that nerd, when I go there, nerdy. I'm like, holy jeez. You know, that makes me want to really just uh, go to do a PhD there or something. I don't think my background allows me to do PhD directly. Ha. It's crossing too far. Yeah, too far. Communications masters into uh, <laughs> yeah. biochemistry PhD. Hmm. But it's so. You never know. All the studies they're doing is like fascinating. Mm. So you got okay. your answer from a uh, time signature about okay, okay. the. Uh, I gotta about have the, a read. Yeah. So in a nutshell, it's uh, accent is pronunciation, mm-hmm. and dialect seem to be the whole thing. Grammar uh, present. Vocabulary. Ah, mm. okay, okay. Does that, I'm wondering, does that, uh, in terms of the degree of a pronunciation difference, does that matter? Because mm. I found that sometimes I talk to people about the Chinese dialect. Some, you know, talk about Chinese tea, you cannot avoid Chinese culture, you cannot avoid mm. Chinese language. Then yeah. Mandarin is a thing, but Mandarin is just like a common tongue, it's not mm. a dialect, it's my mother tongue. Right, mm. which 
if you don't learn Mandarin, I wouldn't be able to understand Mandarin. Mm. I wouldn't be able to speak Mandarin. So a lot of times I found I talk to North American people is that they often get uh, corrected, autocorrected because the accent that I was talking about, but it's not the accent. Like right. it's absolutely not communicable. It's like French and English people yeah. talking. Yeah, there's no chance of exactly. In terms of English. like the pronunciation yeah. difference. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if it matters. Always make me wonder. Well, but that is a good thing. I, I never thought of it, but yeah, for sure. Cool. All right. Well, that wraps up, I think, chapter three, right? Mm. Um, is there still a bit more? Or? No, that's it for chapter three. All right. So uh, some of you may oh, have my note. <laughs> some of you have, may have already hit the, uh, the thumbs up button here in YouTube. If you haven't, uh, we would love it if you would smash that. Uh, we're on the Discord. The, there's a cryptic looking invite link below, right below me, but there's also below that a quick link you can click and join our Discord community. Um, jump in there. It's a great place to uh, share tea questions, share your tea sips, let us know what you're brewing in the middle of the week. Um, I will put a link to Charan. That Puar article has some great simple things you can do at a first level. Of course, we talked today about some of the more advanced differences, but it has some great simple tricks you can use to kind of do a first order uh, look at, at uh, aged or uh, old Puar tea. And guys, as always, I want to take a minute and thank you guys all for coming. Yeah, uh, Jubajia, hi, welcome, glad you made it. Better late than never. And of course, the episode will be up on our website. Mm. The, link may, the link for this exact live will go dead for a while, but it will come back on our website and the link will be in the description. So keep an eye out for that. Of course, if you're part of the Discord community, you'll get mm. a little pop-up whenever we post the, uh, the updated video, the updated video from this live. So that's super handy too. Next week's tea will be Wuyi Tsilan, a de delightful rock tea made from Tsilan cultivar, which is uh, the cultivar of my, one of my favorite teas by at Tsilan. So that's always fun to taste the same plant with a different process. Super interesting. So join us for that. Mm -hmm. And thank you, uh, Time Signature, for answering my question. I see your answer. I need, to, I need to process that. That's really good information I learned here. Yes. Yeah. All right, guys. So well, until next time. Thank you. Keep steeping. Keep steeping.